Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator, esthetician, and honestly, lover of all things sunscreen. And I feel like every time I go out, I hit up Boots. And I'm at Boots a lot. It's like a running joke with my friends. I always look at what's new from the brands, what new brands are here. And I mentioned in a video a while back how I had tried out this new sunscreen from Bondi Sands. I noticed this new line from them, their Hydra UV Protect. And I noticed when I looked this up online that the Bondi Sands Australian site had a face version of this that I could not find anywhere here in the UK. And then randomly, I saw my friend Alicia Lardy post about it, that she had the face version. And she was like, it's at Boots. Just go to Boots to get it. And sure enough, it finally kind of launched here at Boots. I saw it in a couple stores randomly, but it's not online at all. So I don't actually know how to get it here in the UK, but nonetheless, I finally got it. Check the link up here in the card in the corner for the full review on the other version. But today we're gonna be talking about the face fluid. Before I get into it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also go follow me on Instagram and TikTok, especially on Instagram. I'm always posting on my stories about my little boots excursions and asking questions about a lot of things, asking for reviews you guys wanna see. So make sure you follow me there. As I mentioned, I tried this one out and fundamentally, I think this is a really good option. This is very affordable. This is like four pound for 150 mil but this is a body lotion sunscreen. And I was like, it's moisturizing. And knowing that there was a face version, I was like, that has to be a lot more elegant. That has to be a lot more lightweight. So let's try it out. So fundamentally for this video, I'm gonna be using my six Fs testing rubric, which I ain't using in a minute. If you're an OG, you know what it's about, where I talk about the feel, finish, filters, formulation, fragrance, and foundation wear with the sunscreen. I'll have the timestamps down below in the description box. You can just click on where you wanna watch. For the application footage you're gonna see on screen, I weigh out 0 0.8 grams roughly that applies just to my face. I've measured my face. I know roughly how much of sunscreen I need to be applying. And then I'll show the finished after I let it set for about five to 10 minutes. So the first F feel of this. And first of all, this is a little tiny packaging and it has a little dropper situation going on, which tells me this is going to be a super lightweight, super liquidy formula. So with these always, first thing you want to do is shake it up. So as you can see here, it is a little liquidy. It's kind of runny, but it's a little bit thicker than I anticipated it being. I think I thought it'd be more like the Anthelios La Roche-Posay fluid, but it's definitely lightweight. It's semi milk It's like a runny yogurt consistency. And it actually works in really nice. It's really lightweight. And it has this lightweight texture that's still moisturizing. There's still an emollient in a body to it. It's not so much lightweight like the La Roche-Posay as it is the Garnier Ombre Solaire. I'll have the picture up here. But it's definitely a lightweight option, but there's a little bit of a body to it. There's something about it where you start to work it in and it like converts into like a little bit of a thicker semi lotion texture. So it's not the Anthelios UV immune texture where it just like melts into your skin, you feel nothing. There's body to this, it's moisturizing, which leads me to the finish of it. It leaves a glow on the skin. It's definitely a nice radiant moisturized finish. It's not mattes. I know my followers, they love a matte, 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 matte finish. If anything remotely is radiant, they're like, it's greasy. So this is definitely not matte. You might find this greasy. I think it's moisturizing. If you have oily skin, this is definitely a normal moisturizer underneath sunscreen. If you have dry skin, I would moisturize underneath, but this is, I think, a very good normal skin sunscreen that's good for every skin type. You just have to kind of adjust how you use it to be accommodating, but it's not greasy to say the least, but there is an emollient to it. You will feel this on your skin. It's not like my Holy Grail Eucerin oil control, where it's just like this gel that disappears. Its presence is known, but overall you saw that worked in very quickly. It disappeared down, no issues working it in, no white cast, which I'll get to in a minute. It just leaves a nice moisturizing texture. If I had to compare it to a US sunscreen, it's a little bit like a lighter version of the Black Girl Sunscreen screen kids. So filters for this. This is again, primarily sold in Australia. It just got to the UK. Getting it here is kind of questionable still, but you can get it at places I believe like Beauty Bay or some other retailers. It's not available in the US. And that's because filter wise, this has homosalate, octocrylene, avobenzone, tinasorb M and tinasorb S. So let's talk about tinasorb M real quick. I always talk about this on my channel, but if you're not new, tinasorb M is by definition a chemical filter because it is an organic sunscreen. It's carbon based by structure, but it's considered a hybrid filter because even though it's technically a chemical sunscreen filter, it functions more like a mineral filter because it's an insoluble particle. It's not like this liquid that just melts in with the other filters easy and it's you know, a liquid. It's actually a particle that doesn't dissolve. It needs to be suspended in the formulation. And so with that, while it still primarily absorbs and converts UV into heat upon UV exposure, there is still a small percentage that does reflect. And so there is a small possibility of a white cast. I know my friend Julian, aka Scamanda 14, his experience with Tinasorp M is iffy, but if I'm not mistaken, he actually had a really good experience with this sunscreen. Julian has a very deep skin tone, and I was actually very surprised to see that he enjoyed this. So do note, no white cast, deep skin friendly, and Julian does like it. And aside from that formulation points, 
nothing crazy is going on here. The main marketing behind this is that they claim that there is this seaweed extract that really helps to just hydrate the skin for a hella long time. That seaweed extract is uh, sodium carrageenan, and that's basically like a red seaweed extract, which is a hydrator, but also does help with some viscosity elements of formulating. So just note that. And then there is tocopherol acetate, which is a vitamin C derivative, which acts as an antioxidant. This is alcohol, fragrance, and essential oil free. Although that being said, considering the texture and the experience of this, it is elegant. I would love to see alcohol in this to see if that's going to make it more lightweight, if it makes it more oily skin appropriate. That is just my opinion. We are pro alcohol on this channel. I think this could be most skin type tolerable if you have the utmost sensitive skin. This does have octocrylene. This does have avobenzone, which I know some people tend to have eye irritation issues with. I don't, and I never had eye irritation issues with. At most, my eye issue is that because I have the oiliest eyelids and the most obnoxious hooded eye, I do get some sunscreen that collects here in the eyelid. And because it's a Septina Sorb M, it's just like little white creases, but nothing crazy. All things considered, I feel like Bondé Sands is known for their heavy duty formulations that are also hella water resistant. For example, this one says right here, four hour water resistant lotion. This does not designate anywhere on the bottle that it is water resistant to any capacity. It just says it's an ultra lightweight face fluid. And I even found, I fished the box out of the trash. Nothing about that on the box either. But it does say on the instructions to reapply every two hours or more often when sweating and after swimming, which to me does not designate that it is water resistant. And then fragrance, again, this is fragrance and alcohol free, but because it is an Australian sunscreen, it just smells like sunscreen. Nothing too crazy, nothing like out there, but it has a sunscreen smell. It's not unscented. It's not fragrance though. So the foundation wear, again, super lightweight texture, it sets down quick, but it gives a nice moisturizing finish. I think to me that translates to this will wear beautifully under makeup. And I had actually no issues with this under makeup, whether it's a full coverage beat, whether it's an ultra matte powder foundation, this prepped my skin really nicely for makeup because it was so elegant. But again, my only issue that I really had was just creasing and collecting in my eyelids, but literally pretty much everything I use that has a pigment in it will do that to no fail. So overall, I do agree that it does prep the skin beautifully for makeup. Reapplying over makeup though, I did not test out. But if I were to guess and just kind of predict how it would work for people, I think for most skin tones, one reapplication over makeup would be fine. Deeper skin tones, I'm not so confident in, but beyond that first reapplication, it might get weird on top of makeup. So I don't know if I love that. To me, this just, uh, this does not scream reapply over makeup texture in my opinion. But overall, it works great with makeup. No issue with that. My final thoughts. So this little itty bitty teeny packaging is for 40 mil, that's like 10 pound here in the UK. So this is not necessarily cheap, cheap. And looking at this, I'd be like, oh, so it cost me like what, six, eight pound? No, it cost 10 pound. And for comparison, again, this 150 mil was like four pound. Super affordable, super cheap. And my thing was, I was like, if this is, actually I consider this a very elegant body lotion, it sets down quick. It's more hydrated than it is hyper emollient. Again, this reminds me a lot more of like the black girl sunscreen kids. But I was like, if the face version is more oily skin friendly, maybe that would be more worth it. And honestly, I don't, think it is. I think I would still, considering the finish and the overall wear that this gives me, I think I would still prefer this just because it's more affordable, in my humble opinion. Because I anticipated this to be more milky, I thought it'd be a lot more just like a Korean sunscreen and how it wore and how it sat and how it set down. If it wasn't for that, if this was actually water resistant, I think the texture would be more excusable. But if not, I would still be like, I'd anticipate it being more like the La Roche-Posay and Thelios, which it's not either. So I'm just like kind of disappointed in this and I didn't hate it, but I just didn't love it. Just because I feel like I have other sunscreens for comparable price point that do more and give me more benefits, whether it's the UV Immune 400 now that gives me a much more lightweight user experience with better UVA coverage or Korean sunscreens that just set down so much more nice and just have better elegance to them for oily skin. This just kind of sat in the middle for me. Like I'd give this like a B minus, C plus, whereas this I give a comparable score, but you get a lot more product and I feel like the texture and wear of it, it's more excusable because it is a lotion for the body that's more affordable. So yeah, let me know down in the comment section. Have you gotten your hands on and have you tried the Hydra UV Protect Face Fluid from Bondi Sands? What are your thoughts similar to mine? Am I just a little bit crazy? Am I just a little bit too high maintenance now? Have I been spoiled by Korean and European sunscreens? Let me know. And also just let me know, like having oily skin, where your, was your experience similar to mine? Am I wrong? Sound off. Do you agree with me and prefer the body version? Also sound off. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.